So you may be asking what all this has to do with our Christian walk. Well, let me give you some perspective and statistical facts. Only 5% of the world's population lives in the United States. 5%. The other 95% of the world's population lives outside the 50 United States. And we consume 25% of the world's oil produced. Give you a little bit more of a down-home perspective. For the amount of energy that I would produce, it would equal two people in Japan, six people in Mexico, 31 people in India, 128 people in Bangladesh, and 307 people in Ethiopia. And now, to give you a perspective, 307 is probably about the number of people that would attend both services here on a Sunday. Average figure. That's how much the United States and how wealthy materially we are. To give you a perspective. And we're only 5% of the world's population. In Philippians 4, or let me start, come back a little bit. In Acts 20, 35, the Bible tells us it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. But we seem to have a lot. Paul talks to us in Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, and let me read those to you. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Paul puts that in perspective about where the strength comes from and where the priority is. Not in the material wealth, but in him who strengthens me. Paul speaks to the physical things, the material things, the things that we live with yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This brings us to the point number two in our outline, how our worth as Christians is not based upon our possessions, or our worth in God's economy is not based on what we own. Let's read point number two, Luke 12, 13 through 15. Begin. Someone in the crowd said to him, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of his possessions. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of his possessions. Think about that. That actually goes on to talk about the guy that built bigger barns and the next night he died. But a man's life is not built upon the abundance of his possessions. Think about it. Have you ever in your entire life been driving on the road and seen a hearse with a coffin in it towing a U-Haul trailer? Never. It'll never happen. But we as individuals have that attitude. I ask you the question, are we working towards or is our goal to be the richest person in the cemetery? So what is the one thing that we can give someone else, that we can give away, that we can take with us, or they can take with them after they die? It's salvation. It's the good news. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And out of all things, that's one of the things it is difficult for us to do. It doesn't come naturally, and we seem to have a hard time with it. At least I do. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 8, Freely give as you have freely received. It was freely given to us by him. Paul says in Romans 12, 8, Contribute to the needs of others. 
we have an obligation to contribute to the needs of others. And Stan Sagert said, we need to be ready as the body of believers to witness always and sometimes use words. Why is that so important? Because as we see in the third point, 2 Peter 3, 9, everybody is of great worth in God's economy. Let's read that. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Are we as Christians afraid to witness to those people who are lost and going to hell happy? Only to realize after they're gone that we could have, should have been more honest and diligent and direct with them concerning their eternal destination without Jesus. What's more important? I'm not advocating preaching chapter and verse and beating somebody over the head with the Bible, but at the same time, we do need to tell the people the truth. Sadly, many people never realize or recognize that the key to greatness lies not in the amount of money they make, prestige of their career, or how many times they show up on a Google search. True greatness is not limited to the most popular, the most outgoing, or the most gifted. Rather, it is available to each of us and is found in the simple and often quiet role of servanthood. I was thinking about it just now as we were reading the second point. Somebody, every Sunday, puts this little glass of water up here. And it was quite refreshing. But I don't know who it is, and it's a quiet role of servanthood. Not wanting anyone to perish. The Lord is not slow, but he doesn't want anyone to perish. We have a responsibility to try and save everyone. If somebody was drowning, we would try and save them. If somebody was in a car accident and needed to be pulled from the wreck, we would try and save them. So why aren't we as zealous in trying to save somebody from eternal torment and eternal damnation? Two weeks ago, some of you might remember that message, we talked about how many factors play a role in keeping this planet in a situation where we can live on it. And how many factors play a part in making sure that we have the environment that we live in. 